Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connolly reduced the cost of their Tribeca penthouse loft to $10.8 million. People would have laughed at you if you had told them a decade ago that they could live in Tribeca penthouse loft owned by Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connolly. The internet has made it easier than ever to know just about anything you want. So with all this content and information available, how did you know which ones to learn from and which ones actually work? Luckily for you, TTP member, for today's video, we will be talking about Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connolly. Did you know that they reduced the cost of their Tribeca penthouse loft to $10.8 million? Remember that while the first step is completing any of these amazing video, the second and possibly more important step is taking action, even if it's imperfect action. Actress Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connelly, stars of Top Gun Maverick, have reduced the cost of their Tribeca penthouse loft. The Manhattan condo, which was initially priced at $12 million, is now on the market for a still astronomically high $10.8 million. But given that they paid just under $7 million in 2008, a potential sale would probably result in a sizable profit for the couple. The spacious 4,000-square-foot four-bedroom home has a view of the Hudson River and is light and airy. Relaxed loft The double-height chef's kitchen, which has a lot of windows and high-end appliances, is a standout feature. The interiors are contemporary and feature a library, skylights, and wall surf windows. A personal rooftop terrace is also available. The couple received $11.7 million for their Brooklyn home in Prospect Park earlier this year. They paid $12.4 million for the seven-bedroom house in 2015 and suffered a slight loss as a result. The 1899-built limestone mansion that houses the 6,232-square-foot home has five working gas fireplaces, herringbone floors, stained glass windows, mahogany columns, and other opulent features, according to the listing. Celebrity couple Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connolly once resided in this lovely New York City penthouse, which is now back on the market. Four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, and a lush 1,280-square-foot private roof deck are included in the full-floor Tribeca residence. The loft was initially listed for $12 million in April of this year. The current asking price is $10.8 million. A wood-burning stove, tall ceilings, steel-framed arc factory windows, and skylights throughout the apartment help to preserve much of this 19th-century charm. The loft is flooded with natural light thanks to the large windows that are installed in the living areas. A 45-foot wide living room, a double-height skylight chef's kitchen, and a dedicated sunroom with access to the terrace make up this house's epitome of light and space. A large dining area and a library with built-in bookcases on every wall are also present. As soon as you enter the main suite, you will find a dressing room that is connected to a travertine-clad bathroom that is equally impressive. However, the entertainer's paradise on the roof is one of the most notable features. A sauna, planter boxes, trees, and lots of seating are included. In April, Sotheby's international realty listing agent Debbie Korb told The Post, there's something incredibly peaceful about the space. Large stretches of wide open spaces, sunlight glistening off the river, and a charming rooftop terrace. Have we mentioned that you're getting it for less? Jennifer who was born on December 12, 1970, started modeling at the age of 10, appearing in magazine and television commercials. She began her film career in Robert De Niro's Once Upon a Time in America as a young ballerina about a year later, and David Bowie soon cast her as the lead in the Jim Henson fantasy labyrinth. Even though she didn't stop working during the 1980s and produced six films in that time, Jennifer was never able to crack the A-list of Hollywood's top child stars. In one interview, I started working when I hadn't yet come into my own, when I was this walking puppet. I look back and cringe at some of the movies I did. Later she would say, I don't think I was this fantastic actress who was being overlooked. At the time, I had the career I deserved. After completing her high school education, Jennifer pursued studies in drama and English at Stanford University. 
when she was chosen to play the lead role in The Rocketeer, a 1991 adventure film. She entered her adult years professionally and personally. She fell in love with Billy Campbell, the star of the U.S. television series Once and Again, and they got engaged. The couple called off their wedding plans five years later. Soon after the divorce, Jennifer started dating photographer David Dugan. The couple welcomed their son Kai in 1997. Even though they are no longer dating, the two continue to raise Kai together, and the three of them still eat dinner together once a week. The Golden Globe winner, who brought Kai with her to work every day on the set of A Beautiful Mind, describes motherhood and work as a balancing act, and attributes Kai with giving her a fresh outlook on both. If it weren't for my son, I don't think I would be producing this caliber of work, the woman claims. He has transformed me. He has assisted me in coming to terms with who I am and where I fit into the world. With her acclaimed performances in the critically acclaimed movies Requiem of a Dream, Pollock, and A Beautiful Mind, Jennifer has successfully transitioned into the A-list that she was unable to join as a young child. The actress who lives in New York and wed her A Beautiful Mind co-star Paul Bettany in January 2003 claims that she is not used to being a full-time Hollywood star because she is a full-time mother. I lead a very different life at home, which keeps me somewhat unaware of the politics of this business. So everything here is somewhat new to me. On August 6, 2003, Jennifer and Paul gave birth to Stellan, their first child. Seven years later, they made the announcement that a second child due in the summer of 2011 was on the way. She was born in the Catskill Mountains of New York to clothing manufacturer Jared Connolly and antique dealer Eileen Schumann. Her mother came from a Jewish immigrant family, while her father was of Irish and Norwegian ancestry. With the exception of the four years her parents spent in Woodstock, New York, where they lived across the Brooklyn Bridge from Brooklyn Heights, Jennifer spent her entire childhood there. She was back in Brooklyn Heights, going to St. Anne's. The family had a close friend who worked in advertising. He suggested that her parents take Jennifer to a modeling audition when she was 10 years old. She first appeared in advertisements for newspapers and magazines, including Seventeen, before transitioning to television commercials. Sergio Leone was looking for a young girl to dance in his gangster epic Once Upon a Time in America when a casting director spotted her and introduced her to him. Despite having little on-screen time, the few minutes she did have were sufficient to showcase her talent. Her next performance came in an episode of the 1984 season of the British horror anthology television series Tales of the Unexpected. Following Leone's film, acclaimed horror director Dario Argento cast her in her first leading role in his thriller Phenomena in 1985. Although the movie was very successful in Europe, it was sadly drastically altered for American audiences. She co-starred with Jason Presley and the Roy Orbison song I Drove All Night Rock video, which was shot around the same time. In the middle of the 1980s, she released a single in Japan called Monologue of Love, in which she sings a sweet little song in Japanese, in which she sings a sweet little song in Japanese with a semi-classical instrument arrangement. Message of Love, an interview with background music, is the song's B-side. She also made appearances in Japanese television commercials. She initially enrolled at Yale before transferring to Stanford two years later. She received training in both classical theater and improvisation from Harold Guskin, Howard Fine, and the late drama coach Roy London. She starred in one successful movie and three lesser-known ones in the late 1980s. Her roles as a ballerina in ballet in 1989 and a conceited college freshman in Some Girls in 1988 were among the latter. Labyrinth, which was published in 1986, was a hit. After a nationwide casting call, Jennifer was chosen to play the lead in this Jim Henson and George Lucas-produced fantasy. After those movies, her career went through a period of calm before Dennis Hopper, who had been impressed by her and Some Girls cast her as an ingenue small-town girl in The Hot Spot, which was based on the 1950s crime novel Hell Hath No Fury. It received mixed reviews from critics, but it failed to perform well at the box office. An ambitious Touchstone superproduction from 1991 called The Rocketeer saved the day. 
The movie was a classic action movie about a man who can't fly and has rockets on his back. Rocketeer was praised by critics as a high-caliber film that paid homage to vintage 1930s movies with actors like Errol Flynn. Jennifer produced Career Opportunities, The Heart of Justice, Mulholland Falls, her first film with Nick Nolte, and Inventing the Abbots after Rocketeer in 1997. She accepted Alex Price's invitation to work on the strange, visually stunning science fiction extravaganza Dark City in 1998. Jennifer gave a highly praised performance as the wife of the main character in this film. Although the movie itself didn't set any box office records, it did get good reviews. This resulted in Jennifer signing a contract with Fox for the television series The Street, playing a significant role in the memorable and dramatic love story Waking the Dead, and more importantly, making her breakthrough in the controversial and critically acclaimed independent film Requiem for a Dream which is about the haunting lives of drug addicts and the ensuing spiral into decadence and destruction. Jennifer played the most courageous and challenging role of her career in Requiem for a Dream, and for her performance, she was nominated for a Spirit Award. Ruth Klingman, Pollock's mistress, was the character she played in Pollock in 2000, which came after this one. She was cast in 2001's A Beautiful Mind and starring Russell Crowe. The movie is based on the true story of John Nash, a man who battled mental illness before winning the Nobel Prize in 1994. Jennifer, who played Nash's wife, won the Best Supporting Actress awards from the Golden Globe, BAFTA, AFI, and Oscar. Connolly's career continued with the movie's Hulk in 2003, in which she worked again with Nick Nolte, Dark Water, Blood Diamond, The Day the Earth Stood Still, He's Just Not That Into You, and Noah, in which she worked again with Darren Aronofsky, Russell Crowe, and Nick Nolte for the third time. Jennifer is a New York resident. She is 5'7 and has excellent French and Italian skills. She likes doing exercises like biking, gymnastics, and swimming. In addition to being interested in quantum physics and philosophy, she enjoys being outside and ghost camping, hiking, and walking. She enjoys horses, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Jesus Jones, and occasionally, she wears a necklace with a tiny pendant of Dalai Lama. Cobalt blue, forest green, and very pale green or gray, sort of like the color of the sea, are her three favorite hues. She enjoys drawing. Looking into Paul's personal life reveals that he had dated Laura Frazier and Emily Mortimer before running into Jennifer Connelly while filming A Beautiful Mind for a while. He moved to Brooklyn with dark-haired actress and her son Kai after getting happily married to Connelly on January 1 in a Scottish ceremony. On August 5 of that same year, he welcomed the birth of his first child, Stellan. The voice roles of Jarvis and The Vision in several Marvel Cinematic Universe films, such as Iron Man, the Avengers, Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War have made Paul Bettany a household name in the United Kingdom. With his performance in the British film Gangster No. 1, Bettany first caught people's attention. He then went on to appear in a variety of movies, including Wimbledon, A Beautiful Mind, Dogville, Master and Commander of the Far Side of the World, and many more. He was exposed to the entertainment industry at a young age because his parents were both in the business. When Paul was a teenager, his younger brother passed away, leaving him devastated. He stopped attending school, moved out of his house, and started living alone. He rented a small apartment and made money busking on the streets. He struggled for years before he at last established a lucrative acting career. Many of his films have been huge box office successes, including The Avengers, which made over 1.5 billion US dollars, and Avengers Infinity War, which brought in over 2 billion US dollars. With Jennifer Connelly, a well known American actress with whom he has two children, Bethany is what? Early Childhood and Life. In Shepherd's Bush, West London on May 27, 1971, Paul Bethany was born. His mother Anne worked as a stage singer, stage manager and theater teacher. And his father Thane was an actor, 
drama teacher, and dancer. Badney was brought up as a Roman Catholic initially. He also went to Church of England and Methodist congregations. He later converted to atheism, though. Badney and his family resided on the campus of Queenswood School, an all-girls boarding school close to Hatfield, Hertfordshire, where his father was a teacher. He lost his eight-year-old brother Matthew in a freak accident when he was 16. Badney left his home, dropped out of school, and continued to live alone after being profoundly disturbed by his death. He moved into a small apartment and started playing music on the streets of London. When his parents eventually got divorced, Badney's emotional state deteriorated even more. After two years of working as a street performer, Badney was hired by an elderly care facility. Later, he continued his education at the Drama Center in London. Career In the West End revival of the play An Inspector Calls, Paul Bettany made his acting debut as Eric Burling. He also appeared in the Royal Shakespeare Company productions of Romeo and Juliet, Richard III, and Julius Caesar during this time. He played Bill Sykes in a BBC production of Oliver Twist when he was 21 years old. He appeared in supporting roles in the dramas Wycliffe and The Bill from 1994 to 1996. In 1997, he played Prince William of Orange in the English television drama Sharp's Waterloo. He made his screen debut in Bent that same year. His stage career continued and he appeared in Joe Penhall's Love and Understanding. He appeared in the television shows Killer Net and Coming Home in 1998. Following his final stage performances in the play's Stranger's House and One More Wasted Year, the actor concentrated on his film career. Bettany played the lead in the movie Gangster No. 1 in 2000. He portrayed James Tearforth in the television film David Copperfield that same year. He played Geoffrey Chaucer in the 2001 American historical adventure comedy film A Knight's Tale. In the same year, he also played Charles Herman in A Beautiful Mind. In the 2002 film The Heart of Me, the British actor played Ricky. He then appeared in the movies Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World, Dogville, and The Reckoning in 2003. He co-starred with Kirsten Dunst as the male lead in the 2004 romantic comedy Wimbledon. His suspense film Firewall was released in 2006. The Da Vinci Code, a movie based on Dan Brown's best-selling book, starred the actor that same year. Paul Badney played significant roles in the movies The Secret Life of Bees and Inkheart in 2008. He co-starred with his wife Jennifer Connelly in the 2009 film Creation, playing Charles Darwin. He starred in The Tourist in 2010 alongside A-listers Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp. And he also played Michael in Legion that year. Both movies had a modest level of success. The British actor next made appearances in the 2011 films Prist and Margin Call. He then played Joe Fairburn in the suspense thriller Blood. In the 2014 motion picture Transcendence, which starred Johnny Depp and Rebecca Hall, he had a supporting role. With the American drama film Shelter, starring Jennifer Connelly, Anthony Mackie, Rob Morgan, Bruce Altman, and Amy Hargraves. He also made his directorial debut that year. The following year in 2015, Bettany portrayed Jockstrap and the comedy Mordecai. He also appeared in the movie Legend that same year as Charlie Richardson, which also starred Ewan McGregor and Gwyneth Paltrow. He played a character in the 2017 film Journey's End. He also appeared as Ted Kaczynski in the Discovery Channel television series Manhunt Unabomber that same year. Michael K. Williams was replaced by the actor in the 2018 movie Solo, A Star Wars Story, 
during reshoots after Williams wasn't able to make it back to the set. Bigger Works In 2008, the American superhero film Iron Man, the first entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, cast Paul Bettany in the voice role of Jarvis, cast Paul Bettany in the voice role of Jarvis, along with Robert Downey Jr., Terrence Howard, Sean Tube, Jeff Bridges, and Gwyneth Paltrow, the film was directed by John Favreau. The American Film Institute named the movie Iron Man as one of the top 10 films of the year. Additionally, it received two Academy Award nominations. Badney's performance was praised, and after the film's 2010 and 2013 sequels, Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3, he continued to voice characters in them. In the movie The Avengers, Badney provided the voice of Jarvis. He reprised his role as Jarvis in the 2015 sequel to the movie Avengers Age of Ultron, in which he also played the Vision. In the film sequels, Avengers Infinity War and Captain America Civil War, the actor reprised his role as the Vision. Individual Life He had previously dated Emily Mortimer, a famous actress, his childhood sweetheart, the American actress Jennifer Connelly, proposed to him on January 1, 2003. The two met while A Beautiful Mind was being filmed. Both were in other relationships at the time, so they didn't start dating until those other relationships ended. Even though Jennifer Connelly and Paul Bettany are one of Hollywood's most enduring couples, they largely go unnoticed. Although they started dating after the shoot, the two got to know each other while they were filming A Beautiful Mind in 2001. The Oscar winner and the WandaVision star have remained close ever since. In addition to raising Conley's son Kai Dugan from photographer ex David Dugan, they also have a daughter named Agnes Lark and a son named Stellan. Since A Beautiful Mind, Conley and Badney have collaborated on a number of projects, including 2015's Shelter. Both of them have also made appearances in movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Conley had a minor part in Spider-Man Homecoming as Peter Parker's AI assistant Karen, and Badney provided the voice of Iron Man's Jarvis before going on to play the role of Vision. Here is a detailed timeline of Jennifer Connelly and Paul Bettany's relationship, from their fast-paced courtship to their quiet family life. A beautiful mind filming in the summer of 2001 brought Jennifer Connelly and Paul Bettany together. Connelly recalled meeting Bettany for the first time at a table read for the movie A Beautiful Mind, in which she played Alicia Nash, the wife of the mathematician John Nash. Charles, John Nash's roommate, was portrayed by Bettany. Actor Josh Charles and Conley were dating at the time. Two thousand three saw the birth of Jennifer Conley and Paul Bettany's first child together. Stalin was the couple's first child, though they never made a public announcement of it. He was born in two thousand three. Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connelly announced their marriage on January 10, 2003. On January 10, 2003, a Connelly representative confirmed to People that the Labyrinth star and Bettany secretly wed during the 2002 holiday season. Only family members, according to reports, were present at the Scottish wedding of the couple. According to Bettany, the whirlwind romance relationship was a result of fate. The decision to have more children with Jennifer Connelly is largely up to her, according to Paul Bettany on May 29, 2006. Bettany responded, It's a conversation that the woman in the relationship absolutely has the upper hand in, bearing in mind that she is the one who will be going through an enormous amount of pain in childbirth. 
when asked if he and Connolly intended to grow their family further. Paul Bettany clarifies why Jennifer Connolly appeared in his movie Ink Heart. Connolly played a minor role in the 2009 movie Ink Heart, which featured Bettany as the lead. Regarding their decision to reappear together on screen, he stated, Jennifer just arrived. It takes about an hour to complete. So I thought, well, why don't you just put on the dress? It'd be nice for the kids, really, when we get older. Jennifer Connelly and Paul Bettany welcomed a daughter on May 31, 2011. Connelly's representative told People that the couple's daughter Agnes Lark was born on May 31, 2011. In the New York City home of Connelly and Bettany, a scheduled water birth reportedly took place. On May 14, 2015, Jennifer Connolly discussed the differences between herself and Paul Bettany. Connolly discussed what makes her and Bettany unique and what makes them compatible in an interview. Undoubtedly, I'm not the friendliest person in the room. I believe combining with Paul works in a way. She spoke. I'm more circumspect. In a crowd, I tend to be a little shy, although I do a pretty good job of managing it. He is much more extroverted than I am. I'm not shy once I feel at ease with someone. Additionally, Badney spoke with the publication about directing his wife in the drama shelter, saying, Working as a director with Jennifer is like taking a shower in gravel. Despite how painful it is, you emerge from it so pure. Because she is also putting herself through the ringer. You can help but give in to it. Paul Bettner remembers his marriage to Jennifer Connolly on January 14, 2021. While promoting One Division, Bettner revealed how the pandemic brought his family closer and made fun of the fact that he wasn't particularly good at homeschooling. Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connolly cast their votes in a U.S. election for the first time on February 25, 2021, according to Connolly. Connolly revealed she was British-born Bettany's hot date to cast a ballot in his first American presidential election in November 2020 during an interview on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Jennifer Connolly joined Instagram on April 29, 2022 and posts a selfie with Paul. On April 29, 2022, Connolly signed up for Instagram for the first time. I'm starting off on Instagram. This is a photo dump. I'm told. She added captions to a slideshow of images, one of which featured a cute selfie with Bettany. Connolly's Instagram page was captured by Bettany, who wrote on his own account, so finally, my wife at Jennifer.Connolly has joined Instagram. Follow her at your own risk and take what she says about me with a grain of salt. Paul Badney and Jennifer Connolly bring their son Kai to the Top Gun Maverick premiere on May 5, 2022. Badney and Connolly attended the Top Gun Maverick premiere in San Diego as a family because she brought her 24-year-old son Kai Dugan to walk the red carpet. Bettany wore a traditional suit, while Connolly dazzled in a floor-length gold column gown with long sleeves and a high neck. Kai sported navy pants and a white shirt under a black leather jacket. In the eagerly anticipated follow-up to the 1986 classic, Connolly plays Tom Cruise's Love Interest. That's it for this video, TTP member. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person. As a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates, that educates, and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video 
but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon!